Okay, so orals versus IV antibiotics. Hot topic, frequently asked question, why does Dr. Phillips treat with orals and why does my doctor treat with IV? I hear this probably three or four times a week. Right. I'm tired of answering it individually. Can you go on the record? Sure. I used to use IV antibiotics. It's not like I didn't try them and it's not like they didn't work. So I came out of a pretty regimented area, you know, when I did my residency and they kind of hammered it home. You have to do spinal taps and find out. So the first year I was in practice, I used to do spinal taps on everybody. That's Can you imagine so me doing a spinal tap? That's so cruel and unusual, yes. I, no, I can't imagine doing I know, doing but it. I did. And um, and I was so scared of hurting everybody. I would go like so slow. I remember I had one Wait, nice, you used to personally do I used to personally do them? do them. And I had one lady, uh, one nice patient, who I kept, I was like like a millimeter. Does that hurt? Does that hurt? Does that hurt? <laughs> and next thing I know, she like reached around and smacked me. She's like, if you ask me if that hurts one more That's time. That's funny. And uh, so her spinal tap actually was um, positive. We found stuff in the spinal fluid and she ended up doing IV antibiotics. But I had other people, I had people who were in wheelchairs with negative spinal taps and people where they had, you know, some joint pain and they had positive spinal taps. So it wasn't correlating to their presentation. So people with neurologic illness weren't in generally having more spinal tap positivity mm -hmm. than others. Mm -hmm. And when I would treat with IV antibiotics based on the spinal tap result, it didn't seem to correlate either. Like the IV wasn't working generally better for, you Well, know. so that's one thing that I want to understand. What's the logic in using IV versus orals? Um, there is no logic now because they've done the studies. So they did studies with Lyme where they had two studies for acute disseminated Lyme with positive spinal taps and late disseminated Lyme with positive spinal taps. Mm -hmm. And so they knew that the people had Lyme in their spinal fluid and the rationale is that the IV can get into the, you know, across the blood brain barrier better than some antibiotics. But tetracycline class antibiotics and a variety of others cross blood brain barrier also. So, you know, so the real proof of the pudding is in these studies. So they compared doxycycline directly to the IV rocephin and in both cases, the ivorocephalin was not superior. And in fact, doxycycline had a non-statistical edge over the rocephalin. Is this the same for tetracycline and minocycline as it is for doxy versus IV? I mean, generally, I mean, you can extrapolate. You know, they didn't do the studies with minocycline okay. or doxy or, or tetra because doxy is the more common. So minocycline per milligram gets into the, the spinal fluid twice as well as doxy, and doxy gets in twice as well as tetra. But the math doesn't always line up exactly like that because minocycline and doxycycline are highly protein bound, mm -hmm. so they're kind of less bioavailable, mm -hmm. you know. And the dose of tetracycline is seven times higher than the dose of doxy and minocycline. So if you do the math, tetracycline kinds of wins, kind of wins, mm -hmm. and tetracycline is very uh, bioavailable because it's a short half life drug. It's not bound up with proteins. But um, so. But based on those studies showing that doxycycline was just as effective as the IV, and we know that the IV is so much riskier, yeah, you know, why use sense. it? It doesn't make sense from a risk-benefit analysis. And I make, you know, my decisions in medicine, just like we do in, in life, I think, based on a risk assessment and a benefit assessment. And um, it's not like I would, you know, lay down between my patients and the IV, you know, nurse. Um, but I would say... <clears throat> You know, it's not something that I use in my practice, but I have some patients now that are um, going to be, you know, investigating IV antibiotics through these other doctors because mm -hmm. the oral is just, you know, giving them X amount and they need 2X mm -hmm. and they want to give it a try. And a lot of people do end up doing it, but I don't find that it's generally better outcomes. You usually find that innovative kind of long uh, term kind of pulsed schedules of mm -hmm. combinations of oral regimens work better than just recephin for a long time. Is there any case in which you would jump in earlier with a rocephin, with an IV? Any presentation, any yeah, circumstances? Yeah, I mean, if somebody were to have like a fulminant uh, meningoencephalitis, mm -hmm. I probably would, you know, advocate for IV plus orals right at the beginning. Okay. You know, just throw the kitchen sink at somebody, kind of mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. um, and most of those people are hospitalized anyway, so in that context, they're on IVs anyway. The main risk of the IVs is line infections and clots, mm -hmm. you know, so with rocephin people can get gallstones also, but the, but the main scary things are line infection and clots. And when they're in the hospitals, they don't have to have a, a pick line, you know, they can have a, a line that they change every three days. So mm -hmm. the short lines don't have a big risk of line infection. I so, you know. Okay. So most of the time we can, you can get people better with orals. Uh, I think that is really important That's for patients the to take know, home message, yeah. minimize risk, 
still get better? Yeah, I have patients that say they saw a doctor and Dr. X, and Dr. X said, I have to be on IV for six months, and it's cost me $50,000 out of pocket. Well, I'm like, I, I, I get the, we, my, you know, my stomach kind of turns over because too. I'm like, okay, $50,000. And I mean, why not try some of these inexpensive, safer regimens before doing something that's we know to be riskier and we don't know it to be superior? I just don't get it. So. Doxy's cheap compared Doxy's cheap. compared yeah. to that fifty thousand yeah. dollar IV. There are a lot of cheap things compared to that. You know, even the more expensive orals are still cheap compared to that. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it sounds like a lot more tolerable, manageable. Definitely. Okay. All right. Thanks. Okay. Thank you.